Greetings, Excellencies, distinguished panelists, dear participants and colleagues. Welcome to the International Day of Persons with Disabilities 2021 event, Building an Inclusive and Accessible Post-COVID-19 World, Leadership and Participation of Persons with Disabilities. This event is co-organized by the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, UNITAR, UN Women, the University of Tokyo COMEX, Leadership of Women and Girls with Disabilities, Empower Project, UNITE, and STEP, in close collaboration with various civil society organizations, including organizations of persons with disabilities. My name is Takashi Izutsu from the University of Tokyo. It is my great honor to serve as moderator today. I would like to share a brief history of our collaboration, which led to this event today. We, the UNITAR, University of Tokyo Global Forum on Diversity, Disability and Inclusion, UN Women, and STEP, together with the United Nations Secretariat and various organizations of persons with disabilities and beyond, have organized a series of virtual events to promote and protect the rights of persons with disabilities and other marginalized populations in the COVID-19 crisis. In May 2020, we have organized the round table on the effect of COVID-19 on persons with disabilities, together with His Excellency Ambassador Gallegos, former Foreign Minister of Ecuador, and the President of the United Nations Conference of State Parties of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities then, and the United Nations Assistant Secretary General, Ms. Menendez, the Secretary General's Senior Advisor on Policy. In June, we have had a panel discussion on the impact of COVID-19 on persons with disabilities and their inclusion in the global response in the context of the 2030 Development Agenda to share and learn from good practices and lessons learned from different parts of the world. In August, we had a round table among young leaders entitled Young People's Round Table, Youth Voices Toward Building an Inclusive Post-COVID-19 World in which differences and emotional well-being are truly valued. In November, at the United Nations 13th Conference of States Parties, we organized several events, including a virtual event on women and girls with disabilities in Building Back Better toward an inclusive, accessible, and sustainable post-COVID-19 world under the leadership of IBIA. And this June, at the 14th Conference of States Parties, again, we facilitated several events. We highlighted the leadership of women and girls with disabilities again, and also shed light on the power of arts and culture and access to them in collaboration with Broadway colleagues. The title of the event was Disability, Diversity and Inclusion, Broadway Masterclass Session. And today, we are again getting together. Though there are a lot of global and local challenges still ongoing, at the same time, there have been increasing number of collaborative efforts to build our world back more inclusive, more accessible, and more sustainable. In such efforts, it is imperative to ensure participation of persons with disabilities and other marginalized populations in every step, and for that, further strengthening the leadership of persons with disabilities is a very important key. So the objective of today's event are to share good practices and lessons learned for enabling the participation and leadership of persons with disabilities and other marginalized populations in COVID-19 response and recovery, as well as in the current process of building back better, and share practical recommendations for the implementation of strategies for the promotion of the leadership of persons with disabilities and other marginalized populations with shedding light on transformative and intersectional approaches. Now, to start a celebration of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities 2021, it is my great honor to welcome His Excellency Ambassador Luis Gallegos the Chair of UNITAR Board of Trustees and the former Foreign Minister of Ecuador. 
Ambassador Gallegos has been the global champion and the leader in the area of the rights of persons with disabilities and beyond for decades. Ambassador Gallegos led the development and adoption process of the convention as the chairperson of the United Nations Ad Hoc Committee. It is a great honor to have you today, Ambassador Gallegos. Thank you very much, Professor Isutsu, uh, distinguished panelists, dear participants, and friends. It is my pleasure to get together with all of you at this panel discussion to commemorate the 2021 International Day of Persons with Disabilities. As the chair of UNITAR Board of Trustees, I would like to thank the UNITAR University of Tokyo Global Forum on Diversity, Disability and Inclusion and its partners, including UN Women, for spearheading positive transformation in the area of disability, diversity and inclusion. The COVID-19 crisis has exposed the extent of the marginalization and inequities faced by persons with disabilities and other marginalized populations. Yet, the current recovery process is right for opportunities to set new standards and norms and forge partnerships to realize inclusive and sustainable world in efforts to build back our world better. One of the priorities of this process is to realize leadership and participation of persons with disability globally, nationally, and locally. We have been discussing the principles for so long, but we need to finally realize them taking this as an opportunity. All crisis brings an opportunity but we must forge ahead in the necessities of creating a better world. Disability community has learned a lot from gender movement. The leadership of women and girls with disabilities, for example, can be achieved when we combine expertise and experiences for both gender and disability communities. At the same time, gender responsiveness and disability inclusion are not the only building blocks for the diverse and inclusive society. It is high time to look at intersectionally among age, gender, disability, race, ethnicity, origin, religion, or economic, or any other status, with paying attention to invisible aspects, including mental health, psychosocial well being. I hope this panel discussion, which brings in various key stakeholders, including young people, persons, and mental health conditions or psychological disabilities, talented artists, and beyond to contribute to move forward this critical priority of the leadership and participation of persons with disabilities. I look forward to today's discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Gallegos, for your consistent leadership and guidance, as well as remarkable support. Now, it is my pleasure to welcome Harumi. She was born in the Philippines and moved to Japan when she was 13 years old. She's an outstanding singer and sang a theme song for the 14th Conference of States Parties side event, Broadway Master Cross. In 2020, she performed the role of Mimi, a lead female role in the musical Rent. And she's also active in promoting 2030 Agenda and SDGs, utilizing her talent as a brilliant performer. It is my privilege to welcome Harumi to give our speech and her special performance. Excellencies, distinguished panelists, colleagues, my name is Harumi. I was born and raised in the Philippines to my Filipino mother and Japanese father. When I was 13, I moved to Japan. At the time, I couldn't speak the language at all, but music and arts helped me know new culture, communicate with new friends, go beyond the gaps and overcome barriers. I believe there are many ways of building our world back better. Further realizing inclusive policies, accessible social system, raising awareness and capacity development programs, partnership with organization of persons with disabilities as well as young people, utilization of technology, and mobilizing the power of arts. With all those, I believe that we all can be leaders. What is important? is that leaders do not need to be always steadfast. They can be sometimes down and weak and ask for support. And I want to be a supporter besides such leaders too. We can support each other so that we can transform this world as leaders. The most comfortable way of communication for me is through my songs. 
So allow me to continue the rest of my presentation through this method. Everybody has a side that they don't show Everybody wants to keep it Locked up like a dirty secret There's a part of me that's dying to let it go Let somebody see the person Tucked away behind the curtain Getting so tired of lying to myself again I'm not okay It's about time I find the way to tell you I'm not perfect, no one is Do you think you could love me just like this? Cause I'm no angel, no stranger to the dark But I could use the shelter of someone else's arms Looking back, I think it's fair to say I've grown I'm old enough to know what love is Not looking for a bed of roses But playing a part is even worse than being alone Running around in circles Fighting the same old battles Getting so tired of lying to myself again not okay just about to lose my mind if i can find a way to tell you i'm not perfect no one is do you think you could love me just like this cause i'm no angel no stranger to the dark but baby A shadow on the floor Searching for a feeling I can't take it anymore Trying to stop the tears I need you right here With me I'm not perfect No one is do you think you could love me just like this? And I'm no angel, no stranger to the dark But I could use the shelter of someone else's arms Letting me be me Even I'll be there through the night just for you When you're troubled and scared to go
just for you When you lose your way in these deep woods I'll be there and I'll light your way I'll go with you all the way Carry Carry on shining in the dark Even when you think you've lost All the ways you have a role in yourself I'll be there just for you just to see you can see Thank you, Harumi, for the extraordinary performance as well as your inspiring speech. Your speech and songs reminded me of my old days. Before and right after the adoption of the convention, not so many people were aware of the importance of disability inclusion based on the social model at the time. And I sometimes felt alone. Sometimes I felt ostracized and facing a huge wall. But disability focal points in other UN agencies Colleagues from organizations of persons with disabilities and many others helped me to accomplish my work. I think there still are many leaders who are trying to make a difference but feeling alone or marginalized. But we can support each other, as Harumi beautifully indicated. Now, I would like to welcome Professor Nora Gross from the University College, London. Professor Nora has been a globally renowned expert in this area for many years. She's a pioneer in the area of sexual and reproductive health and rights of persons with disabilities. Professor Nora served as the moderator of the United Nations Expert Group meeting on participation and leadership of persons with disabilities in building a disability-inclusive, accessible, and sustainable post-COVID-19 world held in August. She will be sharing the outcome of the Expert Group meeting. 
Um, I'm Professor Nora Gross from University College London, and I've been asked to speak on the expert group meeting on participation and leadership of persons with disabilities, in particular women and girls, on building a disability inclusive, accessible and sustainable post COVID-19 world. It was a meeting held August 3rd through 6, 2021, with 22 experts, disability advocates, disability leaders, as well as observers from UN agencies and civil society organizations. Uh, the host, the organizer was Ms. Kiko Ito from DESA, and the co-organizer was UN Women, represented by Dr. Mojaral Kabir. The objective the was to provide practical recommendations based on expert group uh, experience to identify sets of issues and solutions to advance participation and leadership of persons with disabilities in building back better post-COVID-19. There were three key themes, accessibility, participation of people with disabilities at all levels, local, regional, national, and global, and intersectionality, how to ensure inclusivity across compounding social identities. For example, women and girls, but also relevant to a range of other uh, disability groups, uh, people with disabilities in urban and rural communities, uh, indigenous groups, others. The key findings was that uh, the, as follows. There's a consensus that people with disabilities and women and girls with disabilities in particular fared very badly in the face of COVID because many of the tenants of the CRPD and the SDGs were ignored or pushed aside. These included, there was a need for much better and more systematic involvement in OPDs and people with disabilities in decision-making at all levels. There was a consistent lack of access to COVID-19 resources for people with disabilities. Among the findings also was that there was attention, not just uh, for people with disabilities, but also a need for attention to caregiver, personal assistance, and other people who are there in the lives of people with disabilities. There's a need for improved data collection. There's a need for improved accessibility for information for all uh, disability groups, uh, deaf community, and the need for sign language interpretation, for example, was, uh, 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 was uh, used as uh, one of the many uh, points where there could have been much better uh, involvement. Uh, face masks were an issue for some members of the disability community. Government and healthcare organizations must refrain from unidirectional virtual events to allow better interaction and meaningful participation. UN agencies, international organizations, national and local governments must simplify language, avoid jargon, acronyms, and other references that leave people with disabilities and uh, disability organizations often uh, on, the, on the back foot when it comes to understanding who's talking to who and about what. There's a need for intersectionality. For example, the need for inclusion of uh, reproductive health services and there the increase in uh, the Domestic violence during COVID was brought up by many groups. So for example, the National Organization of Visibly Impaired and Empowered Ladies, novel in the Philippines, did a study where they found their members were at greatly increased risk, and they were not alone. Many organizations reported this. Post-COVID travel issues were also put up. Digital and paper vaccine passports, for example, were currently not accessible for many persons with disabilities. Among the recommendations were the following. We need to create specific markers for inclusivity in relation to global public health emergencies like COVID. Obviously, the Sendai uh, Declaration is part of this, but we need to go, move from, um, from broad uh, discussion to real specifics in, in many uh, communities. Mere consultation is insufficient. There's a need to strengthen existing space available for civil society organizations to present participate at all levels and from the beginning of a crisis, not towards the end or not in the middle. We need to promote communications between international and national agencies and ensure policies crafted on the international level also reflect the needs of persons with disabilities at the local level and vice versa. We need to increase dialogue between legislation, policy, and programming. There are slippages between the legislation and the policy and the policy and the programming, and the result is people with disabilities often are not included in those very programs that are of most importance. We need to ensure that public sector jobs, including the most senior level management and leadership, must be available to people with disabilities. We need to strengthen knowledge and coordination of disability among UN agencies. These include UN agencies that don't ordinarily deal with disability. 
Um, we need to have expertise on disability in all UN agencies. We need to make sure that CRPD compliant budgeting uh, is the uh, critical factor in all discussions. And we need planning for resource allocation. They must be inclusive, but in some cases, they must be disability specific or the twin track approach. Finally, some comments uh, uh, in terms of just uh, looking through or what came out of the meeting. The call for more capacity building and focusing on training to increase OPD's ability to engage in emergencies like COVID is important, but it's not just capacity building for OPD. We need to increase capacity building for UN government, civil society groups, um, many that currently know little about disabilities, uh, public health, epidemiology, law, educators, Again, that we put, need to put the burden of understanding disability across all agencies and not just leave it to the OPDs to, to continue to try to educate and get people's attention. They should have people's attention and, they, and, and then these organizations need to become more disability proficient. We need to expand the dialogue with the medical community, particularly practitioners, including better training for them from organizations of persons with disabilities on practical challenges faced by people with disabilities in the face of a global emergency like COVID. We need more data. Um, that's a perennial comment. We always call for more data, but I think we need specifically more real-time data collection, analysis, and response. Getting data on how people with disabilities are included a month or a year later is far too late. We need to have data collected, analyzed, and included in decision-making uh, on a, on a real-time basis. As a disability community, the, we need to be far more proactive in engaging a broad range of experts in a public health crisis, um, public health emergency disaster. We need to monitor radio, TV, government officials making public announcements. If people with disabilities are not being included, we should email or phone, phone them immediately and, and ensure that it's not just a discussion for later, but a discussion for now. And finally, budgeting reviews and accountability, it needs to be done to ensure consistent inclusion. Again, a, a link to the report itself, I'm sure will be made available as part of this um, uh, presentation, um, but thank you for your time. And uh, we'd like to, again, thank all the members, the experts who participated in the three-day meeting uh, for their invaluable input and ideas. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Nora, for sharing the key points and actionable recommendations discussed among various organizations of persons with disabilities at the expert group meeting in a comprehensive manner. Thank you. Now, I would like to welcome Mr. Gopo Mitra, Senior Officer at the Executive Office of the Secretary General, EOSG, United Nations. The United Nations has organized various actions related to disability-inclusive COVID-19 response. In addition to the Convention, the Interagency Standing Committee guidelines, inclusion of persons with disabilities, and the United Nations Disability Inclusion Strategy, UNDIS, published in 2019, played important roles. And the policy brief a disability-inclusive response to COVID-19 in May 2020 guided various activities at global and community levels. Mr. Gopo has been a key leader in developing and operationalizing these key tools. He will kindly share updates on these today. On the occasion of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities, I'm delighted to participate in this virtual side event on an issue of critical importance, leadership and participation of persons with disabilities. Despite being significant in numbers, persons with disabilities have remained largely invisible in our society. And the voices of women, men, girls and boys with disabilities have largely gone unheard. So today, is a day to recognize and celebrate the decades of action by persons with disabilities and their representative organizations to break the barriers and dismantle the stigma that is experienced by persons with disabilities. To bring about lasting and transformative change on the United Nations work on disability inclusion 
the Secretary General launched the UN Disability Inclusion Strategy in June 2019. The strategy provides a concrete framework for the whole United Nations system to advance disability inclusion, both in its programs and in its operations. The strategy is not a strategy of words, it's a strategy of action. And the participation of persons with disabilities is foundational to it. In fact, consulting organizations of persons with disabilities is, is a cross-cutting theme and as well as a specific indicator in the strategy. It will enable us not only to advance and make our work more meaningful, but will also help us to measure how well we are doing on disability inclusion, including participation of persons with disabilities. The first two years of implementation clearly shows the strategy has triggered action across the UN system on disability inclusion. We are seeing more and more UN agencies and country teams engaging and consulting persons with disabilities while developing their cooperation frameworks, their country program documents, requesting and taking support and inviting persons with disabilities to do an assessment of accessibility of UN premises and facilities, taking support of organizations of persons with disabilities to build awareness and capacity on disability inclusion. We have also seen UN agencies and country teams entering into formal agreements and understandings with organizations of persons with disabilities so that the leadership and the participation can be made more systematic and concrete. We have also developed system-wide guidelines on consulting organizations of persons with disabilities, which provides UN staff practical pointers on how to further strengthen participation of persons with disabilities and organizations of persons with disabilities and ensure their meaningful engagement in all that we do. Ladies and gentlemen, while we have come a long way, we also know that there is a long way to go to ensure full and meaningful participation of organizations of persons with disabilities. When persons with disabilities and their organizations take part and participate in the decision-making processes, policies, strategies, programs, and operations are more likely to be inclusive and meaningful. So on this day, let us all recommit to taking concrete actions to ensure that we meaningfully engage and advance the participation of persons with disabilities and their representative organizations in all that we do. Thank you. Thank you very much for updating us about the most recent UN efforts on disability inclusive response to COVID-19 and beyond. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Abu Hasnat Monju Kabil, Global Advisor on Gender Equality and Disability Inclusion, UN Women. Dr. Kabil has a rich experience in global framework development as well as technical cooperation on the ground, including for Afghanistan and Bangladesh. Dr. Kabil has been a key leader in our initiatives and shares his insight from his experience at global and local levels to forge ahead the gender responsive and disability inclusive COVID-19 recovery and building back better. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who have joined from different parts of the world, different regions to our event. This is an important initiative, very important event on a very specific and special day, looking at the challenges and constraint faced by persons with disabilities, including women with disabilities, given the ongoing COVID-19 and the pandemic and also looking at the possibilities, lessons learned. I'm very pleased to join today on behalf of UN Women with our partner UNITAR, University of Tokyo, Global Forum on the Leadership of Women and Girls with Disabilities, Empower Projects, 
and Voices of Youth, Japan, STEPE, and many other organizations of persons with disabilities. This is an important step because we are not looking at challenges only. We are looking at what are the lessons that we learned in last two years. Now, I, I'm not going to repeat what my colleagues or partners already know and have shared. We all know the impact and the disproportionate impact of this pandemic on persons with disabilities on COVID-19. But what did we learn actually out of it? I just want to raise a few issues that we learned, I learned personally and as an institution when I'm representing UN Women, and also looked at some of the challenges we identified for solutions based on our operational support on the ground, in the field, with our offices, with our partners, with organizations of persons with disabilities, with their leaders, with women with disabilities. Now, when we talk about how can we really optimize leadership of women with disabilities, we are actually talking about quite a few important issues. One is inclusion. How can we make sure that women with disabilities, persons with disabilities are part of the recovery process, the part of the programming and operational support that is formulated on the ground. So inclusion is important, but inclusion doesn't mean that we are addressing or solving the issues. We want to make sure that it is backed by informed participation of women with disabilities and also their leadership. And how do you really ensure their leadership? We want to ensure that the process is accessible and it really address the challenges of reasonable accommodation. Often that is missing or an afterthought of something happened or a project initiated, then we suddenly thought, okay, we need to make sure that we have accessibility, inclusive participation, reasonable accommodation. I want you to plead to everyone that this should be part of the, any program, any operational support, any policy advocacy at the beginning before the initiation of any initiative. And also we want to make sure that the appropriate and relevant necessary budgets are planned in the strategic planning, in the program planning, everywhere. Now, what did you learn when we are working with women, uh, women leaders with disabilities during the COVID-19? One important thing we learned, and I think you all know, is the lack of data availability availability. There was a universal shortage of recent data on COVID-19 and its impact on personal disabilities. Many countries, Office of the Statistics or Statistical Division, uh, but do not pay special attention on the challenges or the number of women and persons with disabilities. So there's a lack of data we need to tackle better. We are also looking at the uneven geographic coverage of the response. In some areas, there are more program, more reachability. In some areas, there are absolutely no support to person with disabilities or women with disabilities. The lessons that we are learning locally cannot become global unless the lessons are transferred. And then a the spirit of South, 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 East, East is collaboration instilled in it. And sometimes we are learning something in a country uh, but we are not transfer transferring the lessons. We are not talking to our partners. We are not looking at how that lessons can be sustained. We are also looking at how these responses can be part of broader socioeconomic response. Sometimes uh, it is running parallelly. We have economic rec recovery planning, but then we are looking at inclusion and disability separately. We have to integrate them. Also, we have to go beyond the COVID-19 or pandemic, we have to look at our health system and how national health system can better address the challenges of women with leadership, women with disabilities, and their leadership potential fully optimized and harnessed in the health system governance. Because the access is a big issue for women with disabilities. It is also a big issue that their voices are not heard. And even if it is heard, it is all, all only shown as stakeholder consultation, not necessarily transforming into 
concrete actionable points. So we have a lot of work to do, both by international community, by UN partner, non-UN partner, organization of persons with disabilities. And it's only not means it's not about adding a reference to disability or a reference to inclusion. It's also about looking really uh, in the details because devils are in details. Often we don't look at them. So today, today we I'm urging everyone to harness these lessons learned and come up with actionable points. Some of the actionable points I have already mentioned. And uh, while we are talking to our partners, make sure that that becomes a, a consistent process, not an ad hoc. So anything we do, any program we plan to forge, any partnership we develop, let us talk to organizational personal disabilities, person with disabilities, women with disabilities, and hear their voices. What is their specific needs? How are they seeing the recovery? How they really use the recovery to uh, thirst their leadership and how their voice is really continue to guide our work, both at the normative front, at the intergovernmental level, but also very importantly, at the local level and national level. Together, we'll be able to sustain and really overcome these challenges. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I look forward to continue to work with the leadership of Women with Disabilities Network that we uh, together forge with other UN partners, with the University of Tokyo, with civil society, with organization of personal disabilities. And in 2022, we want to do more, perhaps with less, but uh, together we can do more. Thank you very much. I wish you a very happy International Day for Persons with Disabilities, and you can count on our full support as you did in the past. Thank you. Thank you very much for bringing up very important insights that can be forgotten in often cases, but very important to bear in mind in every step of our action. Our next speaker is Ms. Abia Akim from Pakistan. Ms. Abia is a key member of STEP and one of the founding leaders of the Global Forum on the Leadership of Women and Girls. Ms. Abia has been a significant young leader in a series of our activities, connecting various global and regional individuals and networks working on women leaders of persons with disabilities. I'm really honored to be part of this panel discussion and I'm really thankful to UN Women, UN DESA, University of Tokyo, UNITAR, and all the key stakeholders who have contributed this program today. Uh, especially uh, Akiko Ito-san under her leadership, how the Takashi-san and uh, Monju Kapir-san is contributing continuously to support the leadership of women and girls with disability. When we celebrate on the global level on the right of persons with disability, we also see some of the good examples and the challenges faced by persons with disabilities during the COVID response. It was a learning phase for us, but at the same time, we identified the gap like where we can make some good interventions so everybody can truly participate in the inclusive development in the post-COVID response. Um, I'm talking on behalf of the Global Forum on the Right of Women with Disabilities, and we see like this platform was really important to create with the support of UN Women and also the UNITAR, like how we can see the roles and responsibilities of women with disability, how we can mobilize them to talk about their rights, and at the same time, linking it with the international policies and strategies. We have the commitment from the Sustainable Development Goals. We have the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability. But still, when we see like 10 to 15 percent of the total population are persons with disability and 50 percent of them are women and girls with disability and more than 80 percent of them are living in the rural areas where they have very limited access to the rights. And during the COVID situation, they were facing stigma, harassment, gender-based violence and even they were not able to talk about it in front of the service providers, in, form, in front of the state representative. 
so this forum was created to provide them a unique space where they can contribute from their experiences at the same time they bring the good practices which was happening on the country's level to the region and from region to the global but now it's very important and time to do a research a proper formal research in which we can engage university of tokyo ucl and some other universities together to identify those contributions of women with disability what they have done in the african region in the south asian region and in all the regions they talking and doing all the good work so we can document it the role of women with disabilities not only in the disability movement but at the same time the gender movement what kind of change they are making and in that research they will we will be able to identify the gaps will be identify the strategies and also linking it with the international movement like for example high level political forum what kind of voices we are raising for women and girls with disability in all the platforms we are giving that space to women and girls with disabilities to take the decision to have their voices there we um, are going to hear from some of the women with disabilities from the region what kind of contributions they are doing but at the same time we are really hopeful for the uh, next one decade we can see that visible change with the evidence based with the meaningful participation of women with disability and we can see um like we are really looking forward to uh, work together in this sector thank you thank you very much for highlighting important perspectives and experiences of the leaders of women and girls with disabilities now i'm honored to welcome mr yuhei yamada executive director of poke which is an organization of persons with mental health conditions or psychosocial disabilities based in Japan. He is also a board member of Japan National Group of Mentally Disabled People and a member of TCI. Mr. Yamada leads various activities related to the rights of persons with disabilities, including leading the development process of the parallel report for the United Nations Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. He will speak in Japanese and Mr. Shunsuke Oka, a member of Empower Project and a master's student at the University of Tokyo will provide interpretation in English. Thank you very much for letting me join you in this meaningful session today. My name is Yuhei Yamada. I'm the executive director of Porke, an organization of persons with mental health conditions or psychosocial disabilities based in Tokyo. I've been engaged in various social activities, including the disability movement as a person with mental health conditions and psychosocial disabilities. え、私は生まれ育ったのが東京都大田区というところです。現在もそこに在住をしています。大田区は花田空港がある工業地域でまで一方で、古くからのお茶屋があるような風情のある街並みがあります。I was born and raised up in Ota City in Tokyo, and I'm still here in Ota. Ota City has an industrial area, including the Haneda Airport, while there are also traditional and cultural communities with old temples. I've been trying to make the city inclusive through bringing voices of persons with disabilities to the city administration as well as the city council. その1つである災害に関するプロジェクトをご紹介いたします。2019年に台風19号という大規模な水災害が発生しました。
区内にある多摩川という大きな河川が一水し、区内にも一部被害がもたらされました。大田区では初めて障害者を対象とした福祉避難所の開設が行われるなど、障害のある人らに対しての対応が図られました。Today, I want to share one of our projects related to disaster response. In 2019, we experienced a massive flood due to the Typhoon 19. A big river called Tamagawa River overflew, and there were damages to the local communities. Ota City has opened a welfare evacuation site for the first time in its history. And responded to the needs of persons with disabilities. w a t a s t a c h a t o o k k o k a t a c h i n o k o s o t o k a n g a k a n o m e m b e r a k u n a n o t a o n a s o g a s o u m o n a t a i s o n i a n k e t o c h o s o k o n a m a s t a s o d e o m o t o n i s t e f u k s h o k n a f u k s h o k a o s a k i h a t s o s i m i n t a n t e k a k s h i s a n k y o r u k n o m o t o s a i g a i c h i n o s i o n a s i e n y a In order to share this experience, we conducted a survey among various persons with disabilities in our organization and in the city. In addition, we call for collaboration for practitioners in the area of welfare. Civil society organizations working on disaster risk reduction and academia. We came up with a report with recommendations regarding required support system and capacity development to prepare for and respond to disasters. シンガポールを本拠地とするマーシティリリーフ支援金からも助成をいただきました。報告会には行政職や繰り返り議員の参加がありました。その後、来年度以降の防災計画について懇談を行っております。Various stakeholders, including those outside of Japan, supported this initiative. For example, Mercy Relief, based in Singapore, gave us financial support through the Japan Disability Forum. In the launching event of our report, various people, including city governmental officials and city council members, participated. This led to our joint consultation on disaster risk reduction planning for 2022 and beyond. 今後は災害時に精神障害特有のリスク、例えば服薬確保の流通確保など、想定される具体的な課題について、行政や民間と共同しながら問題を明らかにして、リスク回避のための啓発資料を作成したり、医療分野を含む関係者とガイドライン作りを行っていきたいと考えております。From now on. We would like to identify specific needs unique to mental health conditions and psychosocial disabilities. For example, access to regular med medication after disasters, develop awareness raising materials to address challenges and guidelines together with stakeholders in health and other sectors. 水災害や地震を含めて災害のリスクに備えることが大切です。10年前、日本の東北地域を襲った東日本大震災の際には、障害者の死亡率は総人口のそれと比較して約2倍という統計調査も上がっております。Not only in Japan, but globally, it is imperative to prepare for disasters, including floods. And earthquakes. Ten years ago, the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami devastated Japan. At the time, mortality rate among persons with disabilities were reported to be twice as high e r than those without disabilities. 
障害のある人にも必要な減災の支援が届くようにすることが大切です。日本のことわざに備えあれば憂いなしというものがあります。経験を含む経験を共有し次世代につなげていけるような取り組みが必要だと私は考えております。そのような取り組みが国内外に広がるよう頑張っていきたいと思います。It is a must to make sure necessary disaster preparedness and response are accessible to persons with disabilities. There's an old Japanese saying, be prepared and you'll be okay. It is important to share our experience, including disaster experience, and communicate with future generations. I'm committed to scale up such activities both in and out of Japan. そのためには、私たち一人一人が主体となり、地域で暮らすさまざまな人の声に耳を傾け、他の分野のアクターと協力をし、さまざまな人のニーズや思いが、政策やシステム、そして実践に反映されるようにしていくことが大切だと思います。皆様と国や分野を超えて協力できたら幸いです。ご清聴ありがとうございます。In order to achieve this, it is important for each one of us to listen to voices of various people in communities as an agent of charge,、uh, change and to work with actors in other sectors and to make sure the needs and wishes of various people are properly reflected in policies, systems, and practice. It will be my pl pleasure if we can work together. Beyond borders and sectors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing your concrete experience as a leader to make differences in the area of building back better in the COVID 19 as well as disaster risk reduction contexts and reiterating the importance of inclusion and the leadership of persons with mental health conditions and psychosocial disabilities and other invisible disabilities. Now, it is my great pleasure to welcome Ms. Rika Sugata, former representative of Unite, Mr. Satoshi Iyama, co founder of the Empower Project, and Professor Atsuro Tsutsumi from Kanazawa University. Satoshi and Rika have been actively working with various global and local stakeholders, including UN agencies, governments, civil society organizations, and business sector. For example, They have co organized events at the Conference of State Parties of the Convention at the UN headquarters and bringing youth perspectives with innovation and transformation. They are also working on community level collaboration with young leaders in other countries, including developing countries. And Professor Atsuro had been a key person in disability inclusion in the UN system and JICA, and now working closely with young people. As professor at Kanazawa University. They will talk about their perspectives on young leaders and intergenerational as well as intersectorial collaboration among leaders. Thank you very much, Professor Izutsu, for your kind introduction. Representing Youth Tokyo Unite, a youth organization that aims at strengthening the partnership between UN and students in the University of Tokyo. And the Voice of Youth Japan, an online platform that we host with UNICEF to enable all the youth to share their voices safely, regardless of where they live, their sexual orientations, disability, or any other differences. I would like to convey my sincere gratitude to UNITA and UN Women for co organizing this special event. I would also like to thank Harumi for her wonderful performance. I was very moved by her singing, full of warmth, beauty, passion, and beyond. When I was little, I always felt that I was somewhat different from others. I tried to find out who I am and identify my strengths through playing the piano and listening to many music pieces. Music enabled me to express various feelings, understand different cultures, 
and emotions. While I became a bit proud of myself in a way that I was aware of the power of music and the arts in general, I was still afraid of my differences, what I was not good at due to my visual disability. Until I became the representative, I had never expected to play a leading role since I thought leaders needed to hide their weaknesses. However, my experiences in our organizations told me that differences did make our activities successful. While there are so many things that I cannot do just as my colleagues can, such as taking photos, my role is to lead the organizations by communicating the value of the arts and sharing my stories. Surprisingly, I can encourage marginalized youth to express their unheard voices through artistic mediums such as novels, poems, photos, and music today. Our activities have gradually become widespread thanks to the collaboration with UN agencies, the private sector, and many partners irrespective of age, nationality, and disability. We all have many different backgrounds, preferences, likes, and dislikes in ourselves, though we cannot define ourselves using only a few of them. Honestly, I sometimes feel afraid of what I'm not good at even now, though I can finally embrace every aspect of myself, my strengths, and weaknesses thanks to my colleagues with diverse talents who always support me and perhaps thanks to my differences. Being a leader does not mean hiding my uniqueness anymore. Instead, it means just being myself, trusting in people around me, and promoting mutual support with much attention to the beauty of differences, emotional and cultural aspects. I believe taking these steps must be essential for achieving the leadership of various people, including persons with or without disabilities. In doing so, I believe the world will become a more colorful and inclusive place where each difference can be truly varied. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Professor Izutsu. My name is Satoshi Iyama. I'm a student at the University of Tokyo and co-founder of Empower Project. I would like to thank all the co-organizers for having this wonderful opportunity together. I would also like to thank Harumi for her wonderful performance. Her songs always heal me and encourage me. I am 26 years old now, and even in my short life, I have encountered a lot of suffering and the difficulties among many people. Among them, the difficulties that are closest to my heart are those related to mental health. And I have always wondered if there is anything I can do when my family and loved ones are suffering. I also strongly felt it would be possible to create a society that is kind to those who are experiencing difficulties in their lives. So in my second year at the university, I started an activity called Empower Project. This project promotes the Magenta Star Batch to indicate our willingness to support others. We call it Coming Out by Supporters. Through this initiative, each and everyone can be a supporter for those who need support. Of course, there are many persons with disabilities who wear a magenta star watch as a supporters. This is transformative since in Japan, we tend to take for granted coming out by those who request support, who could be pregnant women, persons with disabilities, and others. But this project promotes the opposite, coming out by supporters. We have been learning out in Japan and some other countries, sometimes together with the UN agencies. 
Institutional, environmental, and attitudinal barriers are made by people. Hence, we need people to transform those barriers in our mind and in the society into respect and support, as well as access and inclusion. Through this, I believe we can realize a world where all of us can live in dignity. In leading this activity, I experienced a lot of things. Of course, there were challenges, but there were even more wonderful and rewarding things. For example, I was able to meet extraordinary adult leaders like Professor Tsutsumi, who were wonderful role models for us. And I was able to meet young leaders like Alika, who are passionate about their work. During COVID-19 situation, we were not able to carry out our activities as we had done in the past. And we faced many difficulties. However, what supported us at such times was the accumulated knowledge and experiences of the older generation and the fresh opinions and digital native sensibilities of the younger generation. I have been a youth for a long time, and I feel I am in the transition period to become an adult. As an intermediary between adults and younger people, I want to do whatever I can do for both generations. In this world of many difficulties, I feel that in recent years, there have been a lot of disconnection between generations and gaps between various sectors. However, I believe that a good world can only be realized on the basis of the wonderful accumulation of the past and outside of our own community. In other words, learning from what have been done in the past and in other areas can create new ideas and new solutions. That is why I'd like to foster leadership in myself through learning from the previous generations and good practices from other sectors and passing it on to the next generations beyond sectors. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Takashi. I am Atsuro Tsutsumi from Kanazawa University. I'd like to start by thanking His Excellency Ambassador Gajegos and all the distinguished panelists and the leaders for inspiring presentations full of good practices, lessons learned, and practical recommendations. And I can't help expressing my sincere gratitude to Harumi for her extraordinary performance. What a beautiful song. Working at the university, I have come to realize something that I have never known in my previous careers. That is inspiration, passion, and new perspectives of young people are truly special and beyond imagination. I'm fully convinced that young people are the change agent for the future world. There have been many young leaders emerged in the COVID-19 response and helped the world to improve accessibility through new technologies, to tackle with fake news and wrong information, to promote mutual support, to shed light on importance of our emotional well-being, and to bring many other solutions. Adults may have a little more knowledge and experience. If we share such knowledge and experience with young people and support young people to realize what they want to envisage based on their new ideas, help them overcome challenges and link them with the key stakeholders and role models, we can create a better future together. Likewise, if young people guide adults with new ideas, culture, and technologies, adult generation might be able to come up with transformative solutions. It is only through intergenerational collaboration that can bring about innovative transformations toward inclusion, accessibility, and sustainability. 
This year, the Olympic and Paralympic Games were held in Japan. Athletes of various backgrounds showed the unlimited potential of human beings. Among them, when I was watching women's marathon for visually impaired persons in the Paralympic game, I was very much impressed by one of runners. It was a guide runner. Guide runner communicated with his counterpart all the time with his hand connected by a rope with the runner. He called out to the runner, sometimes on hills, sometimes on curves. He talked to the runner in difficult times, telling her who is churning her up and what he sees in the sky. In fact, guide runner might not be known by name widely, nor is he publicized. He just stays too close to the learner until she gets to the goal, but he is one of the enablers for her. I felt that the relationship between adults and young people might be similar. Besides COVID-19 pandemic, there have been increasing number of disasters and conflicts in the world. There are many survivors who are still struggling. To build back better from COVID-19 and other catastrophes, new perspectives, new modalities, and new cultures made by young people are essential. There are an increasing number of young leaders in the world. Satoshi and Rika are role models who are making huge social changes through their leadership in this world. I strongly believe that we can create a wonderful post-COVID world, which is truly diverse and inclusive if we can work together on the constructive collaboration beyond age, sector, and any other differences. Thank you. Thank you very much for very inspiring stories and specific recommendations. Your presentations reminded me that the leader do not need to be always strong. Actually, leaders need each other, and when we need support, we should ask for it from colleagues, as Harumi also indicated. Now, we are approaching the end of the session, and I would like to welcome Ms. Akiko Ito for her closing remarks. Akiko has served as Chief of the United Nations Secretariat for the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, as well as co-chair of the UN Interagency Support Group on the Convention for so long. And many of the breakthroughs in this area of disability in the UN were possible thanks to Akiko's extraordinary leadership, coordination, network, and her passion. It is my privilege to have you today. Thank you very much, Professor Izutsu. We commend and greatly appreciate your many years of leadership in mainstreaming the mental health perspective in advancing the disability inclusions in a global agenda, with an emphasis on engaging youth and their organizations and through performing arts. It is such a great honor and privilege to continue our work under the global leadership of His Excellency Ambassador Luis Gallegos, former Foreign Minister of Republic of Ecuador. Today, we are also privileged to commemorate the International Day with the Organization of Persons with Disabilities, as well as youth organizations such as UNITE and EMPOWER Project, the Global Forum on Leadership of Women and Girls with Disabilities, the Global Forum on Diversity, Disability and Inclusion, and with our esteemed colleagues of UNITAR, University of Tokyo, and UN Women. One of the highlights of this event and the commemoration of the International Day this year has been an extraordinary performance by Harumi and other talented artists. We wish to express our great appreciation to this gift of music performance 
in commemoration of the International Day of Persons with Disabilities 2021. We all witnessed how the artistic expressions empower us and connect us all as one global community. Earlier this year, the United Nations organized an expert meeting to further advance the leadership of persons with disabilities in building a disability inclusive, accessible and sustainable post COVID-19 world. Based on the global leadership of persons with disabilities and other civil society organizations. This is also the theme of the International Day this year. And today's event is taking one concrete step, learning from new perspectives to identify transformative solutions for the world today under the leadership of persons with disabilities, in particular, women leaders with disabilities. The COVID-19 crisis has exacerbated the marginalization and inequalities, but uh, we also recognize that the international community represented here also by the esteemed participants, accumulated experiences to bring an inclusive, accessible, safe and sustainable world to fruition, including under the leaders with disabilities. Let us continue to move forward with the leadership of persons with disabilities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Akiko, for an inspiring closing remarks. We have been talking about the leadership of persons with disabilities for a long time. Now is the time to take concrete actions through realizing it in each and every phase of our efforts to respond, recover, and build our world back better. It is a must and also an opportunity. We have identified existing gaps, good practices, lessons learned, emerging solutions, and transformative ideas from leaders today. We can and we need to take actions in many ways. Transformation in our own system, attention to multiple marginalization, data collection, resource mobilization, constructive partnership and mutual support, intersectorial and intergenerational collaboration, empowerment through arts and culture, and much more. I hope today's session will strengthen our knowledge, motivation, and our partnership to realize disability-inclusive world through our efforts to build back better and to have a bright hope for the future beyond this crisis. I'm looking forward to getting together to further move forward soon. Thank you very much again for all the distinguished panelists and all the participants from the world and all the colleagues who made this event possible. Thank you. Even 
I'll be there.